So I'm now starting the recording for the lecture today. So we're going to go over some things with, and this is content from Epic Games that we're going to go over. So this is the this is a PowerPoint slide just about the interface itself. Now it is showing UE4. Not much has dramatically changed in the interface. It looks a little different. There's a different color scheme, but but in general. What you're going to get with UE4 is what you're going to get with UE5. And UE5 is literally just more an upgrade on UE4. So you'll create your first, in this lecture, they're, they're showing you how you're going to create your first project, learn to navigate the editor interface, move around a level in the editor, and play, play test the default manner. So creating a new project. Like I showed you before, when you go to the Unreal, um, again, we're going, we want to bring up the Epic Games Launcher. And we're actually going to open it up for you. So again, the first thing that you'll want to do is you want to go to the library and under, again, engine versions, hit the plus button, and now bring up an install of the engine. I'm updating it right now. Uh, I'm not going to worry about updating it right now. But idea, but ultimately, basically, you'll be able to launch the engine from here. You'll also be able to launch projects from here as well. So this is the project that I have open right now. Um, let me close, close this. Let's actually launch for the the engine. Let's close the engine. Now, the, given this is the launcher, um, now it's going to update. So I'm gonna, I ignored the updates um, so I can go back. So this is what when you launch the, the, the engine, this is what you're going to come to. You will want to go to this games panel right here and click on it. These are all different different um, project um, templates. And in here you've got, you can have a blank template, uh, the first, a first person shooter type template, a third person, a top down, they've got handheld AR, a virtual reality template, and a vehicle template. Um, start with the. We're going to start with the third person template. Over here, you want to make sure the blueprint is selected. There's two types of project you can start with: a blueprint focused project, or a C++ focused project. For this entire term, we are going to be blueprint oriented. Okay, that's pretty much. We're going to be using blueprint the entire term. What blueprint is versus C++? We we will talk about throughout the term, um, but it's not right now for you. Make sure it's blueprint. Target platform is desktop. The quality preset, set this to scalable. Okay. The reason the reason why we set this to scalable is so that the engine isn't going all out blazing, um, trying to be as pretty as possible. We're not focused on the end using the engine to be pretty. We're not we're not focusing on if we were doing an art piece, then yeah, then we want that to be maximum. But we don't need that to be maximum. And we want to, you know, just basically save our, save, we don't want to blow out our engine, our, our PCs or our cards right out, out of the gate. Um, you do want starter content. This will add a lot to your disk, disk space for the project. You're going to add a lot of, a lot of things in there. It's going to be, a, and content in Unreal tends to be on the big side. We do not need ray tracing. Again, for project name, um, essentially my suggestion was your last name. Uh, 
And this is game 1303. Again, there's things they'll tell you if there's something wrong. You know, project names cannot contain space, whatnot. Um, the other thing is project location. There is your user documents folder. That's a bad place to put them. Right. I know Windows likes to like, hey, use that. No. Um, get get a working folder at the root of your drive. Now, these most of these machines have that folder already created, but at home, you'll want to create this. Like, literally, it'd be at the root of your 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 uh, root of your C drive. Um, I have an Unreal folder because I'm working with multiple different things. So if I wanted to, I could then, um, once I've got that, bring this up, I can then create the project, and it would then, you know, basically create the, the project and get things up for the particular template that we start. Now, I'm not going to hit create already because um, we already have um, this project going already. So that's what the, this is the, the project browser. So that's what this is going on right now. You know, your existing projects, new projects. Again, you've seen it's, it's been, they've reorganized this a little bit from under Angel 4 to 5, but it, there's pretty much everything you see here you are getting, the same, uh, you're getting in um, Unreal 5, you're getting, and there's more templates. Not pro again, it's not process for any new, new project. So main interface and a few changes have happened, but for the big uh, again, you've got there is the world outlier panel. You'll hear me say this referred to as the hierarchy because that's what it's called in Unity. But basically, this is everything. This is the, these are all the objects that are in the scene. Um, if we go back to Epic, they've actually moved the outlier over here on this side, which is nice. This is this this is actually a nice. And if you don't have again, uh, what they're showing was that this is how it was set up in that scene. Uh, one thing you can do is you can move. These are all different panels that can move be moved around. So I can grab like I did. You can see that I can put dock it to here, and I know I've got the outlier here. Uh, I'm gonna pull this in because I don't need it as as much information. Um, so one of the things that, I, again, um, if you hit this tab right here, it will bring up the tab itself. Um, this is an important oh, here we go. Hide the tab. So again, that blue blue dot right here will bring up bring up the tabs. Again, I right clicked on the tab so I can hide I can then close the hide tab. I can also close. Um, I am gonna hide the viewport. No, um, that's so now that I've closed I can go back up here and there are different uh, viewports. I'll bring up that viewport because that's the one what I want to do is hide the tab, not close it. So Typically, when you're working with Unreal, you'll have one viewport where you'll be able to move around. Um, you will use the mouse, the left, the mouse, to move the, the cursor in here. You'll use your right mouse, right, right mouse button to go into a mouse loop move mode, and then you can use WSAD to move around in the level. No, that's that's uh, that's a Unity thing. That's not so. So someone said, um, if you hold down uh, Shift, uh, you go faster. That's not in Unreal. That is a feature of Unity. And Unreal, uh, there are ways you can move how how fast it moves. Uh, there are options. Uh, there's a lot. There's a lots of different p things going on. Uh, but any, but anyways, the most important thing is that you're using the right right mouse button to 
turn where you're looking, and you're using WSAD to move around. And this is something that you will get used to very commonly. Now, I have selected this bottom plane, and that brings up a gizmo. And this is the movement gizmo. So, in theory, if I use the uh, left mouse button, I can um, moving my camera around as well. Uh, but if you grab the gizmo, you can move the object around. Now, there is a grid, and I just used um, Control Z. So Control Z will undo things, and there, it, Unreal has a good un, undo system. Um, we'll go over more of the, but the grid is up here. So this is grid is on, and this is determining the grid snap value. Now in Unreal. Um, we are working in centimeters. So uh, you will typically ju jump up to 50 to 100. Um, if you're blocking things out, you're going to go even bigger, like even 5,000 or 10,000. Um, I'm going to jump to 100. And you can see that the, the box is moving a bit more. I can actually go to 500. Uh, yeah, I'll go to 500 see that the squares got bigger you can see that I've got now this is just basically a rule of thumb with working with levels is that you want to work as big as possible and then come down in size as you do details all right um, you are never gonna ever gonna work on the 10 or the 50 grid 100 is probably where you are mostly gonna be working on in Unreal I went to fi 500. I, I could even gone to 1,000. Um, in fact, yeah, 1,000 would probably do, do me well here. And again, I said one of the things is I want to be able to uh, duplicate duplicate this, this floor and set it up. So I'm just literally going to go uh, Control C, Control V. You can see I've got a new cube. And here. size of this thing. That's, that's a good question. Okay, so I need to set this to 30. And I'm going to, again, uh, 50,000. So one thing that Epic, that Unreal does is when you duplicate an object, I'm going to duplicate this again. So I'm going to use Control C, Control V. So just copy and paste. Um, I didn't do it this time. Perhaps this. Oh, this was actually off by 100. Okay. So I want to put that as zero. There we go. I'm just going to grab this one. I'm going to move this down like that. I'm going to bring this right down here. And ultimately what I, I will do is I'll move these walls about. Uh, the one thing that you can do is that this text right here, you can, just get, you can just get rid of. And I use the delete key to get rid of it. Y value. So when we look at the, the this gizmo, red is going to go down the X axis, green is going to be your Y axis, and blue is going to be your Z axis. So in Unreal, Z is your up, which is what you are accustomed to, longitude, latitude, height. Um, those who are using Unity, Unity has Y is up, and there's a reason for that. We'll talk about that particular reason in, in Unity, why it's called screen space, effectively. Um, we'll leave the, the discussion of why that is the case in, for Unity uh, in the Unity course. But you can see right now I am at negative 3,000. This is where I want to be, but I'm, I'm, I'm at negative 2,400. 
Um, that I really wanted to be at 3,000. 3, so you can go in and you can use the transform basically is, again, the location, its rotation, and scale. Uh, let's duplicate a wall. And I'm going to bring this in as um, 10. And I can rotate this like, like 45 degrees. You can see it's rotated from its pivot point. Now there is, so, so selection, select object is Q. Select and move is W. The rotation is E. You can see that Gizmo changed to these rotation tools. Um, in other, other applications, these are full spheres that you'll see. And then um, R is your rotation tool, and if you've gone to basically sticks with blocks at the end of it. And I can scale them based on what's on what on one axis. Um, if I go in, you, you can see there's these connectors. I can scale on two axes. And in theory, if I grab the center, I can scale on all axes at the same time. Now, I'm going to go in and I'm not going to type in one, N, uh, 4. All right, I'm going to make it, make this smaller. So I'm making, building this out. So we're looking at, here are basic cubes. Um, why is it called SM underscore cube? Because they're static meshes. These cubes are static meshes. So in Unreal, you have been given... Um, so let's go to uh, one of the things. So there is things you can add quickly to the project right here. And so the basic stuff. Uh, Arctic cat will um, trigger box. Shape. So we'll go over these in one moment. But basically, shapes is the one thing. Is cubes, spheres, cylinder cones, and planes. Sphere is going to give us where we can move. Uh, let's go to five point five. So I just created a sphere. I'm going to make this uh, five so we can scale. Go back to the Add the project again. Shapes, um, a cylinder. Let's see, escape and cone. And then there is the plane. Now you will use the plane. Uh, basically, it's just basically a, like a flat piece of paper. Um, one side is visible and the other side is not. Um, I will tell you right now, you will use planes only for like, the most part, distant objects. Like you, you've got like a billboard in the distance. A plane will do, do you fine. Um, why would I not, why would I use the plane? You, so one of the things you might want, think you might do, do is use the plane for your floor. That's a bad idea. Um, and the reason is that if, if the character happens to like dip below, below the floor, there's no collision with the plane after that point. And you will fall through the you will fall through the plane. Um, this is why our floor, if we go back to our floor, our floor pieces, they're cubes. Because if you happen to dip in below the surface of the top of the floor floor, you will be in the cube itself and there will be a collision interaction that happens. And, and basically, all you know, and this is the same thing with Unity. Um, Unreal will push you out of the floor, so you can. So basically, you've got better collision with the cube than you do with a plane, and that's why you will see the, these floor pieces made uh, with a cube as opposed to a plane. Question. Uh, pretty much when you've got something in the distance, like a like a billboard in the distance, or you've got like trees, like that are going to be flat. The plane is going to do do you good. And then, again, this is this is the primitive 
uh, object in in the uh, in the engine itself. Okay. Um, as you move on, you will create your own meshes. Are, are we having all right. These are all these are all static meshes. Just to give you. Was that? Not in this class. The different class teaches that. So, but but essentially, Unreal Engine likes static meshes, and these are all the primitives that you've been given. To and these are these are here to give you. Um, this is one of the ways you can prototype out. There are a couple of other tools, but this is not. Um, we're not dealing with level design. So like I know there's like a, a Q formation tool, which is kind of cool, and they've got other tools, but. We're not we're not here for you to be level designers or artists or environmental artists. Um, we're here to, to basically that you are going to be a programmer. And one of the things is that, a, particularly a gameplay programmer, um, you don't need to worry about those pretty tools. If you can get your level up and running with these these primitive objects, um, with uh, you know a couple objects that have already been given to you, go ahead. That's what 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 you need to you'll need to do to get things up and running. And you'll basically you're you're not building things that are going to be, be shipped, per se. All right, that's the other thing is that you're you're not building things that are going to ship unless you, you're taking on the level design role. Our focus is that you're not going to be on that role in any in particular way, and you just need a uh, you know a a, a gray box. Uh, what I mean by gray box is it's a, a prototype level that you can get up and running, run around in. And demonstrate what the what you guys worked on. Let's jump back here. Um, other pieces of the engine. Uh, let's go back there. So there is the details. So basically, you will select objects in here and select the objects from the viewport. The details is basically of the property. So. Um, again, I've, I've got a cube. It's a static mesh. It has a static mesh properties. Um, you can apply materials. We'll talk about materials in a little bit. Um, you will see that there's a lot of information and a lot of things you can do with objects in Unreal. And it can be oppressive at times, the amount of information it throws at you right away. Um, you can collapse stuff. Like, again, right now, the transform is going to be the big one. Um, maybe materials later on. Um, and you can see that this is the cube, this is the object, and it has a static mesh component, which basically is what is defining this object. There will be issues of, are you working on the object itself, are you working on a component? So, so with Unreal, you have classes that are, that are objects in your scene. And these objects can have other components attached to them. For different purposes, um, right now the SM cube, it, the static mesh component, is basically the rendering information for the cube. If we can uh, pay attention to the lecture at the moment, um, if we hit spacebar, sorry, um, control space. Um, if you hit control space, it will bring up what we call the content browser. Um, you can dock it. Uh, but it's going to take up like this is going to take up a lot of a lot of information on the screen. Um, so when you want to select, um, let's go into here's the starter content, and they have um, props. And one of the props I'm going to do again, uh, Control Shift. Sorry, uh, yeah, Control Shift. And I'm going to throw in, I'm going to grab the, the this chair, I'm going to bring it into the scene. Rotated as I see fit. It is building shaders for some reason. There we go. And so basically, I just went in and grabbed another model and threw it in the scene. Uh, we're going to do Control Shift again, bring this up. And these are all different me static meshes. Uh, let's go back to the, the. So you can go up and down using this section here or. Uh, going down, up, down, through the up here as well. Uh, let's take a look at there's shapes. So if you wanted, yeah, I can do. Okay, 
here is So I'm going to scale this up. So I want to point out this, this piece right here, as cool as it looks, um, its pivot point is right here. And so what we mean by pivot point, this is where the object's orientation uh, registration in the world is going to be. This is where its actual position is going to be. That's based on its pivot point. And we, we'll talk about how to, how to adjust pivot points and, um, as we build things in Unreal. Uh, so when I scaled this up, it scaled it from this pivot point. So it scaled up in this direction. So uh, let's go through, and you can. There's a, a tab for the content drawing down here as well. Uh, there is textures, but we want to go to materials actually, and we've got a slew of different materials that we can apply to the world. Grab the cobble and I'm going to apply it to. Yeah, these are it's, these are materials. Um, we're going to try a diff, different. I, this is uh, the cobble is the so these these cubes are scaled up in a weird way, um, so that what we call their UVs are uh, not signed correctly. Uh, So here is concrete tiles. I'm gonna, and I'm basically I'm clicking and dragging onto the object. Now these objects that we're talking about right here only have one material channel. But if we look at the chair, let's click on the chair under materials. Um, it has only one material. That's interesting. Um, some objects can have multiple material channels. And by doing the so, we would we would apply it to the, the material to um, a section that of that material channel, um, and replace that material with a different material. A great example of this is a if we're building a character for a team-based game, we would have um, let's say the torso is one object within the character. We would, could have that torso piece having two different materials. Uh, one being the underlying shirt, and then the other one being the color trim. And so you'd have like blue, and typically blue and red, or maybe yellow, or uh, whatever your team colors are, be, could be would be applied to that trim to represent that that team color. I think they've done everything with one material. Or have they? Oh, here we go. Here we go. Um, so here is a statue. And I'm actually going to make this bigger. So you can see it. So there are two different elements. So we can drag the material onto it. Um, we can also select, if we pull this down, we can select a different material we can search for. And I'm going to go for the gold material. And down here, I'm going to go, it's M statue, but I'm going to do uh, You know what, this is where I'll use I'll go, here we go, cut brick, cut stone. You see that I've changed the material. Now I've changed this on the instance of this, partic this particular model. So if I go back um, and, I, and I put another statue in the world, again, So again, when I brought the statue in, 
came in at a, at a size of 111. Um, the default glass piece and the default um, statue base material is, go, is a 5 stitch. We'll, we will look at how we apply this per model, per object. Um, let's go to the content draw. We'll get started content. Um, there's audio in here. Like, and th this is basically, I think, everything here. So there are some music. Um, content draw F starter. Yeah, music. The starter music cue. And I, I can literally drag this into the scene. And now I've got, I'm going to pull this up. So now I've got something that's playing in the scene itself. So press play. Yeah, we're just you're just we're just playing with Unreal. We're just like the goal of this lab is to have you get familiar with um, the basics of using the interface. Just go. Let me just go through quickly. Uh, modules. Let me just make sure I've got, I'm, I'm saying this correctly. Yeah, so again, I'm, it basically save a new level as a new name. So what they're saying, what I'm saying here is basically when you get here and you know the start starter map, go up to file, save as, um, save current level as. So in Unreal, um, things that are, you know, spaces in, in the engine are in levels. In Unity, they're called scenes. In Skyrim, Oblivion, Fallout, um, uh, Starfield, they're, they're considered zones. That's just how the, the terminology for the engine. So you'll, you'll hear me go between level and scene, depending on, yeah. And again, think, think got to go back, like this is uh, the engine, this, this is based on the hist history of the engine. You know, we look at Unreal Tournament, you played in levels. Like you, you, it was a deathmatch game. It was a competitive game. And so you played in a particular level uh, that was the setting and whatnot. Um, in Unreal, you went from level to level, and that's you know uh, old it type terminology from Quake One. You went from level one to level two to level three. Um, whereas with Epic, they had level streaming. You went from one level to the next. Um, you may you may stream out a level, stream in another level, which what that's what um, Half Life is doing. You, you get points where you are switching switching out your levels, and essentially. The uh, the st little, yeah, small load. Well, in Half Life Two, you would um, there are there are. The best way the way to describe it is that in Half Life in Half Life Two, you would hit a load trigger, and they would uh, load the load the load thing would come up, and then you would go from one map to the next. And basically what they did is for Half-Life is that um, you went from one map, there's like a doorway that you went through, and there's a corridor in front of you. And you went through the doorway, and now there's a low trigger. Basically, in the other map, you would have, there is basically that doorway and that corridor, uh, but what you could see behind you. And there was another low trigger that would bring you back to the previous map. So that's how they, they worked it. Again, we, we can discuss that further. That's more of a level line term, and but but basically, I'm just giving you an idea of like like the, this is why we call them levels. It's just uh, it's the older terminology. Um, it is referred to as scene in other in other engines such as Unity. So there's more than one term. What I'm trying to get across here, there's more than one way to call what is our gameplay space. Yeah, this is this is our gameplay space, and I want you to. Think of your gameplay space is everything that you are playing in, and everything you can see from where you can play in. So, if you've got mountains that you can see in the background, that is something that will be in your level. 
that's part of the, the level of the game, your gameplay space, is that, is that Decker, Decker new piece. Um, in Half-Life 2, um, when you leave the train station building, you come out to the square, and you look out, and right in front of you is the Combine um, Citadel, essentially. Now, that's a model off in the, um, actually, that's a model of, they're, they're doing Skybox shenanigans. But it, but in Unreal, that would have been built to scale. So since Unreal Engine 3, that model would be would have been built to scale, placed where it needed to be, appropriately. Now, the trick that they did with Valve did with that particular model for the Citadel, the Combine Citadel, is that as you got further to the top of that object, um, to give it that massive scale, they start to play with the alpha of the object, the material material alpha on the, on the object. So to give that, you can't see the top of the of the citadel. It's so damn big, and it's smoke again, smoke and mirrors. All right. Um, someone I'm going to bring up multiple times is Randy Pitchford. He is the founder and president of Gearbox so Software. Now, th there's a lot you can find about him, and there's a lot of wacky things about him. The most important thing you, sh you need to know right now about Randy Pitchford is that before he came to the game industry, he was a stage magician, literally out of Vegas. He understood smoke and mirrors. He, did, he was doing his work, early work, was with um, 3D, 3D Realms. You know, basically, they went literally, literally like the story that when I heard is that he went out with people to a particular location uh, one night um, during the interview process, and then he went back to his hotel room uh, with his got his laptop up and running, and then mapped out where they had been. It's a bit of a seedy place, so enjoy the red lights. Um, yeah, um, game industry was a very different place. Uh, now, now we're talking mid '90s, so the game industry was a very different place where it is now. And there's stuff that went on back then that would not happen today in any shape or form because we've grown up and the lawyers have got involved. But that's another story. <laughs> but but ultimately. Um, I want, I want to remind you that this is about smoke and mirrors. One of the old tricks of old of cin cinematography from like the 20s and 30s and 40s is that they had people who would they would have these big frame like two by four frames, and they would cover cover that frame with canvas, and they would have people to paint the canvases. There is a classic sword fight with Errol Flynn in his in the Robin Hood film that he is known for. And they're fighting up the staircase and they're behind bricks that look like castle bricks. Those were painted. They look they look real, they look convincing, but they were painted bricks. They weren't actual bricks, they were painted bricks. And that's one of the things is that this is what makes us different from other simu like from true simulation. It is like if you're making a racing game and all you need is a car, you don't need the engine, you don't need the axles. I mean, the wheels moving is all you need to do. But there, the wheels moving is independent of the car itself. You can get, you can do like if uh, if that's all you need, um, you can get away with a lot of tricks. And to simplify what you're doing. You can fake realism to a certain extent with a lot of tricks, and that's something to be aware about. That's what you're where you're at right now. We are we're not building, you know, we're not here. I mean, we're here to build gameplay, and that's our goal. As we go on, we're going to be building gameplay pieces. What's fun is not necessarily absolutely really realistic. And this brings to about game design. Modern game design consists of two pieces. It is the rules, the, you know, the game mechanics, but it's also the experience that your player is having. It's great that you have great rules, 
But if you're if, if all you have a rule is you have no good experience, then no one's going to play your game. You know, I I look at well, I'll be blunt. I look at Valorant, and I see nothing new in Valorant. I see Counter Strike. Yeah, it's pretty, and there's characters, and there's there's classes, special abilities. Special abil- yeah, special abilities. But you know what? Like, how is this any different from Team Fortress 2? How is this any... Yeah, you know, like, I don't see anything that's, that's wanting me to come and play that game. Mm-hmm. Now, the finals. Finals for a while had my interest, and I was really into it. No, I played and the reason, the reason for it is the finals had destructive tr- environments. Yeah, so so be, be, let me be very specific about what what I'm um, like. One of the classes in the finals is a heavy character. They have a sledgehammer. I bought the battle pass for the first season. Um, I managed to get it, get everything. So in that first, so my heavy is running around in an elder suit with wing black wings because that was the last thing you unlocked. Um, has a captain hat with um, the face paint that evokes. Bowie's Space Odyssey character. Oh, and he's got the Tatar uh, skin for the, uh, the the sledgehammer. And with the sledgehammer, you can destroy terrain. You, you can blow. You are basically a wrecking crew. Well, that's just the first yeah, but what's but it's more fun to blow the, to destroy the terrain. There's actually a there's an achievement in the finals to destroy to destroy. There's a bridge across uh, part of one of, one of the levels. And if you if you destroy the bridge, you can because it's it's destructible. You actually get an achievement for it. I did that way too many times. Yeah, there, there's a setup. Yeah. Anyways, tangent. Come back to Unreal. So again, the goal is basically here is hey, um, you know I'm I'm basically adding stuff into the scene. I'm using copy and paste. I'm throwing materials down. If you can do that for this assignment, you're in a good place. All right. um, to test your scene, you're going to basically hit the, the, the play button right here. There's some other things here. You know, this is, you know, pause, pause uh, you can advance a single frame, but you're basically going to you know, play, play an editor view. Now, in Unreal, um, most of the time, you are going to have a player, not always, but most of the time, you're going to have a player start that's going to be spawned in the world, and you will need a player start for that to, to indicate where it is. And the red arrow, and in, 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 in Unreal, the red arrow is the forward direction. So if I want to rotate this and have it look in a different d- direction, See the arrow is now pointing in that direction. Click on it. Um, so now the, this object pointing. So when I spawn in, I'll be looking at the chair. And I'll press play, and you'll see that's the case. Uh, I, I don't have anything to inter- do interact with the chair at the moment. You can collide with it, and that's pretty much what. And that's pretty much what we can do. Like these, these, these objects have collision. We will talk about collision at another time. Basically, right now we want things to be solid. You know, I can push, I can push this around. These these blue boxes, I can push around. And then, again, be mindful on you because I move, I've moved the walls. Um, if you you can jump. Oh, I hit the kill Z. That's interesting. Maybe we can try that one more time. So climb up the thing. I can do these ramps right here. I've got ways. Again, this is basically a, a jungle gym, essentially. I can go across and jump. Uh, be mindful. Um, I didn't realize. So one of the things, if I fall off the edge, um, what's going to happen is that my character is going to go away. Unreal has a concept of a kill Z. So if you fall below a certain point, that object is going to be removed from the world. Um, and right now, there is not a respawn system. So if you so 
basically this this template file was was built with those walls in mind that you wouldn't go over those walls. Now that I've moved the walls, I can fall out of the world, and I can get hit by that kill Z, and then again, I don't have a respawn as it currently at the moment. So just be mindful that if things go over the edge of the wall, uh, fall out of the world, um, they're going to be get pulled from the simulation. So that includes your character currently right now. Um, later on, we'll 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 look at like the first person shooter, and we'll shoot ball, balls around. Um, we can shoot them out of the world. Um, ultimately, they'll fall. You know, they'll come down and fall outside of the world, and then the, the kills you will, will take them out. Basically, the idea is that if 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 an object's fallen outside of the world, we want to just get rid of that object from the world. Fortunately, right now, one of those objects is our player, so we. There's there's more code that would would have been written to handle that appropriately. It's like you you fall out of the world, and there are maps that where um, you can fall out out of the world, you know, intentionally fall and go into the kill Z. What was that? Nah, um, sorta. It's a it's more specific. It's a more generic specific scenario with Minecraft, whereas. This is something that's customizable where that kill Z can be. So I'm going to just leave that at that point. Um, there are some special objects right here. Uh, so this purple box is basically is the post process volume. This is your skylight. This is the volumetric cloud. It, this is the directional light. This is essentially where the, the sun essentially is. And then there's a sky atmosphere. So these are basically like making the world look pretty. Uh, this is the, how the light is being directed in the world. Uh, you don't need to touch any of these objects for this for this assignment right now. You will you will at some point later on, but not right now. Um, you can see that I'm going to collapse a lot of different things here. Uh, blank. Um, there's all these different different. Um, one of the things Ike will do, and I will actually, I might. One of the things I, I usually do is I put a world folder in, um, and I can just grab all of these guys. There we go. There we go. So I've basically put all those objects into the world. And I can turn them off as a group. And that would be a lot because it's the world. So, like, again, but here is uh, block number one. Oh, I have, I have everything selected. There we go. So that, that's block number one. That's block number two back there. Block number three is there. Uh, cylinder is over here. Uh, should be this ramp. But basically, um, you will use want to use folders to organize your scene. Uh, I'm not sure why this is not playing. I'm just going to get rid of it right now. Um, I'm actually going to take my world data layer and data portion. I'm going to put these up as part of the world to get them out of the way. Um, and so you'd have different different things. Um, I mean, one of the things I'd probably keep at the root is possibly maybe the player start. Um, here's the plane that I create. I'm just going to delete this because we're not going to actually use it. Grab the cone. Um, let me just go through. So I've given you the, the, the lab assignment. Uh, let's go back to giving you different pieces. Um, there is the menu bar up here. And we'll go up here, various things. So let's go over some terminology. So um, Unreal Likes working in terms of what is its end, what is its objects. Okay. Anything that can be placed into the world is some sort of uh, is some sort of actor. All right. 
Majority of what you are dealing, you're going to be dealing with, are going to be of from the art derived from the actor class. Um, things such as like the player character that we're running around. Um, if it, if if the player can control it, it will be called a pawn. Right. And these are these are basic terminology terms right now. Um, a component is a is a piece of an object. It has particular functionality. So again, here is the cone. And it has a static mesh component, which is basically the rendering information of the object. If we, I'm going to go, pr I'll press play. And I'm going to pause it. And we go, one of the things that's been spawned in is the third person character. And you can see that it has a capsule component, which is a collision cylinder. It has a mesh, it's character mesh. Um, it has a, car a camera boon and a follow camera attached to it. Uh, it has a character move movement component. So it's got all these different pieces applied to it. Um, again, the idea is that we can build a class out of different component pieces. Um, and this is for code for use. Go down to the player start. Go back to the player start. You can see that it has a the player start has a capsule card, and that's basically to make sure that it, the, the the player start is in the world. Like if I bring this down, you will see that. Oh, didn't change. Uh, usually, it will tell me. Let me see if I can. It, it should tell. It usually changes to saying this is a bad start. I'm not going to put this back because I don't want to actually put it out of the world. Back. Uh, actually, yeah. The first. I think the first person should be. Um, there are versions of the player start where that will tell you that the player start is not in a good location um, and that it's a bad start. So it's typically like a player a player start that's off the ground or in the ground. Um, yeah, go, going just going back to the content draw. Um, again, materials is like here is all the materials that have been given to you. Have fun, play with them. Um, like um, texture things. So I'm going to texture this wall. And I'll texture this wall. This version. And it's stretched out because this is a this object is is actually stretched out. No, not really. Not. Not right now. Basically, these objects are being stretched out because they're prototype. They're prototype objects. So this is this is gonna just just roll with it right now. Um, later on, we will we will we'll do things where we'll, we can fix the UV mesh. In fact, what what would this actually end up being is that this would be you'd bring in a wall mesh piece to replace this that where the UV would was uh, set up correctly. UV being basically. Um, when you apply a material to an object, um, where is the, the upper left corner, where is the upper left corner on each of the faces, um, that data is called UVs. And that is something, it's, that's, that's a modeling question. So don't, you know, this right now, don't worry about. You know, later on, we will make flat materials or, and, you know, single color materials. UV is not going to matter. So don't, don't, don't worry too much about what's going on here. And we will talk about materials in another uh, class, hopefully. Uh, talk about viewports. Um, there are seven standard viewports. Um, the perspective, so basically this is the perspective view. 
there is um, from a top view, bottom view, left view, right view, front view. So think of a queue. There's six six ways you can view a queue. And that these are our orthographic viewports. Um, by you're gonna these are all gonna be default by Brian, you know. Um, what was uh, okay. That's just okay, yeah. Um, if cinematic there is um, other tools for cutscenes, so a camera can have it be a cinematic camera. Um, it, is it lit? Is it unlit? Is it wireframe? So there's different ways we can look at. Do we want to look at just lighting alone? Uh, what are the reflections? What is player collisions? at it on lit. We can look at it in a wireframe. And this is showing the world as well, this wireframe. Uh, detail lighting. But again, lit is probably what you want for the most part. Unless you're doing something very specific. So you can, there's different options to have. And then what, what are we showing? Um, we can turn on the collision for objects. And this might be useful. If you're, if you're figuring out what's going on with your level, this can be very useful at times. Um, but we can turn off different things. But like, so let's turn off the collision. Let's also turn off um, fog. Uh, and clouds. Yeah, we could, things that you could potentially turn off. Uh, atmosphere. I'm going to turn these back on just for the sake of having them on because they're there. So there are more options. Um, there was one more button right here. Um, basically, let's go grab the wall again. And right now you can see that these, these axes are, are, are always aligned with the world grid. Like this is down the x-axis of the world. So if I'm going this way, I'm adding to the x location. Now I can work on the object in a relative scale or a local scale or a local position. So if I wanted to move on, uh, you know, so the x-axis is pointed this way because I rotated the object. And I can move on that particular rotated axis. And that's, this is the local axis. You know, this is based on its rotation. Um, basically, it's based, that these axes are based on its rotation. And again, I can take this and you can see that this now axis now, because I rotated it up, it's, I can, and so, this is these are things that you can be used to your advantage to move objects around. Um, for the most part, right now you're going to stay with the world, but there will be cases where the local will be important. Um, you can control how the objects connect to services. You can play with that in your spare time, and there's a couple other things. Any questions of what I've got talked about so far in class? Oh, um, though the reason I was having an issue with movement is because my grid size was too, way too big. Let's go 10,000. And I'm going to grab this object right here. I'm going to copy and paste. And then I'm going to try and move it. I'm going to try and move just a little bit. And it's like, eh, eh, it's not moving because I'm not moving 10,000 units. But if I go down to 50 and I try and move it, you can see that I've got, I, I'm able to move it now. So it's based on the, the grid snapping is what was preventing me from moving it. Again, grid, grid size, like 50 is probably the lowest you want to work on right now. Um, 100 is probably more, more appropriate. Um, again, I'm going to go back up to five, 500. Um, basically, when you're working on a level, you work as big as possible, and you slowly move down the scale as you need to do detail work. If I was working on terrain, um, uh, like like prototype objects for terrain, then this would actually be like I probably would be at ten thousand, but I would uh, I'll, I'll be way zoomed out. So I'll go 
like 10,000 now. And I'd be like, you can see that. The object's over here. So, so I would be working on a very big scale. Like my camera pulled out at that for that scale. So, but again, um, this, these are things that I would, you know, as a level designer, I'd, I'd be doing. Um, but for you, again, you're, you're probably a thousand, five hundred, one hundred. These are the three that you'll be using the most until you get to detail work. You'll be at fifty and ten. There's probably no reason to go to five or one. Probably two, two, one. You never, you'd probably never use one. I, I would be using one only in final, like I was making final adjustments to objects. Um, you know, I'm, I've got like a row of boxes. I'm, I'm breaking up positioning and uh, making it so it doesn't look like I'm OCD. That's why I'd be using a one. And that's something we'll, we can talk about another time. Um, let's go through other slides. Um, I'm going to let you just read these because basically what's an anatomy project, working with assets. Um, we'll talk more about how we bring in assets later on. So we'll, like when we bring in a material, um, we bring, sorry, we bring in a texture that you can use for a material, I should say. Uh, let's go over electric coordinates just so that we've got this fu fun this fundamental. Uh, this is, there we go. Actually, I'm gonna this this is not not working. So um, I'll let you read this as well. This is like about electric coordinates in terms of what is what is global, what is local. Uh, what is like when we talk about things that are parented um, objects? You know what? How do what 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 are what happens with when you're dealing with parented stuff? You're not doing you're not doing anything that's parented this week. Um, the folder thing right now is you're going to be ordering your own structure. Oh, there it goes. Just loaded it. Um, again, nothing here has changed from Unreal Engine four to to five. So again. Cartesian coordinates, for our purposes, again, we, we have three coordinates, you know, an X, Y, and Z. Z is up, X is forward and unreal. In Unity, I'm just going to point it out because some of you are going to be in Unity, Z is forward and Y is up in Unity. And that's just, it's in a different coordinate style space. Uh, we talked about pivot points. This is, again, the or orient the origin of the object in world. This is where the world believes the object is to be. Now again, pivot point is relative to the object. Like here's the chair, it's down in the middle of, of the side. We saw that one on the cube, it was on the corner. If I was making a grandfather clock, it would be on the back side of the, the grandfather clock. So the pivot point is relative to how the object is be, going to be used. Um, they've got a couple lights that are hanging that would be like, intended for this hanging, hanging from the ceiling. Pivot point is on the top. If I had a full lamp, the pivot point would be at the center bottom of the, of the lamp. So again, pivot points are relative to how the object is being used. Again, you've got three, three parts of the transform. It is, represents where it is in the world or its orientation relative to, to its parent. It has its scale and it has its rotation. Uh, I showed you the move transform. I've shown you the transform, the rotate transform. I've shown you the scale transform. These are pretty, and it, these are pretty straightforward once you start playing with them. Um, interactive and manual transforms. Oh, so what they're saying is interactive transform. You're basically you're using the gizmo, and then manual transformation means basically you're going into the the, the, the transform here. And I showed you this a couple times. Uh, let's grab this object here, and right now I've got it rotated 40 degrees. Let's do this 20 degrees instead. I went in and I typed in the value myself. Um, right now location is at negative nine eight twenty. I'm gonna say this should be negative 800. And this should be negative uh, 100. 
So I'm going in and I'm actually typing values to be very specific. And that's something that you will get used to. Get used to going and typing zero, zero, zeros for stuff. Later, later when we're dealing with, with um, objects that have other objects, um, we're when we talk about um, like blueprint objects, uh, when we talk about things that are parented, um, like their rotation, location, and location and rotation are going to be relative to that object. Um, scale, you expect to type in one, one, ones into there. Like I've got this object, it's scaled in a weird way. I'll make sure that this object is scaled to one, 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 and everything underneath is scaled one, one, one as as I desire until I need some an object that needs to be scaled appropriately. We'll talk more about hierarchies and scaling and relative. That that that's a whole can of turn of worms. We'll deal. We will we will deal with that question uh, probably next week, most likely, because I because I'll be building a blueprint class. Uh, back in again, world and local transforms. We'll deal with more with local transforms next week. But basically, is this object? Um, if you've got an object um, paired to something, then the local transform becomes, become, that's where the local transform comes into play. Um, we'll, we'll deal with that next week as well. Uh, unit measurement, again, Unreal is using one, is one, one, yeah. By default, one Unreal unit is equal to one real world centimeter. So they're using the metric system, everyone. Typical player is about six feet tall in game world. No, don't get me wrong, that's big for a human being. Um, this equates to about 180 centimeters or 180 Unreal units. And you can change this to suit, suit the needs of your project, wherever that default is. Use it as a base value to establish context for size of all other actors. So what you'd probably, to, to be lazy, uh, you'd probably set an object scale of 200 units. Because you want a little bit of like headroom for the player, and this is including even though it's for six foot, you'll probably want that that those twenty centimeters for the headroom of your player, and your your player is going to be um, you know several like one or two meters wide, so it'll probably be like a hundred to two hundred wide as well. I mean, you could do about a hundred wide, a um, hundred wide cylinder, two hundred tall. Um, that that would be a good stand-in for your player. And having, again, why are we saying this? Because scale becomes an issue. Um, I've, I've built maps where scale was out the window. I had a console that is, you know, human size, and then next to it are these pallets that are like five, six times as big as they should be. Um, I've got these, these engineering looking things that shape uh, the circular, that circle the room. They are essentially five or six stories tall compared to the player. Um, yeah, scale, I was an early level design in, in my master studies and that was an issue, so. Um, we will talk about modular level construction later on. Grid units, we've talked about the grid, snapping on the grid, organizing a scene, we talked about folders, the world outlier. Layers, um, we'll talk about layers another time, but basically you can organize your scene in uh, your, your level in terms of layers. Um, there are some gameplay reasons why you would have a layer for things. Um, like your ground, like having just, just the ground um, could be a layer in your, your application. We'll come back to layers another time. Are there any questions about what you need to do for this assignment? In a, mo in a so basically in a min in a minute or so, I'm going to stop the, the recording, um, and then this will be then put up onto YouTube. It's a matter of how how fast can I upload the video to YouTube. Um, once it's uploaded to once I've uploaded to YouTube. 
Um, I will get the URL for the lecture video and I will place that into Discord under the lecture, the, the lecture, there's a lecture video channel. I will also put this up, uh, I will attach this, I might, uh, if it's not an announcement, I'll attach it to the module. So we will go back to assignments, where that module is. So here is the, so if, if, um, I, I'll, I will add it here. There'll be another URL link to the YouTube video here once I get get it up in the uh, on, on YouTube. Okay. Um, any questions that anyone wants to get onto the recording before I stop it? What's up? Yeah, that's basically, uh, let's, go, let's go in and I'll show, demonstrate that. So here's this object. You're doing control D and, sorry, uh, shift D. There we go. So. Over here, um, okay. Let me um, let me let me put this in a smaller grid 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 reference. Uh, this this didn't make any sense because of the, the grid size. All right, here we go. So right now I'm working on a grid size. Uh, Control D, I'll duplicate. There you go. So it's moved it uh, literally like so. The original. Let's put the so so the original here is at 800 uh, 100. My grid size, I'm going to put it to 100 just to make the math easier. Uh, I'll duplicate it. And you can see it moved it um, 100 units on the X and Y. And that's a default that default behavior of Unreal. Um, instead, use Control-V, Control, I'm sorry, Control-C, copy and paste. Control-C, Control-V, and it copied it right into that spot. So if I wanted this, you know, basically this object, but it just rotated, I would use the you know copy and paste, and then I can just and so I'm going to do 90 degrees here, and I'll say this is 45, and then if I wanted to do copy and paste. So here we go. Um, we need to duplicate. Okay, that's not what I wanted. Okay. B, make this go five. Uh, let's just do zero. And then I'll do control V, C, control V, and I'll do. So here we go, using control C and control V, and I basically I'm just doing, this is down zero degree, 180, 90, negative 90. So, so rather than using the duplicate, try using control, the copy and paste instead. Any other questions before I stop the video? Cool. Okay, I'm going to stop it right now.